Hello everybody, so today's recording is pretty simple, it's uh... <clears throat> well, as, as the title says... Uh, yes, I've been maining Vault for as long as I've played the game. Essentially, the way I, well, started playing him to begin with was... At the start of the game, you get a couple of options. You got Vault, Mag, or Excalibur. And... Uh, I don't really know what made me fall in love with with uh, Volt. It's not like he is super unique or anything, but in my opinion, I love him mainly because he's gotten gotten me through the most impossible missions. Sure, I would fail a lot, but he is pretty versatile. So, uh. I do want to say in advance, I although I love this Warframe and I'm genuinely interested in having more unique ways and how to play, and which you're going to see in a second, I honestly not I'm not going to show you any of the most unique builds, so if you're expecting something like super spectacular and unique, you might have to look elsewhere. There's really unique world builds, and I'm, I'm definitely going to try something out later i was thinking of doing something with uh with some sumable ability this one so that i'll see what it does with discharge i mean it'd be interesting but you have to kill enemies for that to take effect maybe up against corpus enemies i don't know probably gonna try and make a plethora of unique builds but there's only so much you can do so obviously i'm gonna explain everything very simply uh, right now what I'm showing off is the, you know, complete build of the Warframe with all of the, ch all of the shards, uh, yeah, it's a, I don't know, Eclipse a very basic thing to go with and it's not that uh, exciting but uh, it's nice to just see super high damage numbers when you need them and you're going up against enemies that are really tanky and resilient but yeah, probably, w I mean, I do wish I could replace it with something more, you know, flashy, like a like an ability that looks unique. Uh, we'll see about that, what I can do with it, but, you know, let's begin. <clears throat> I'll get into the abilities in a second. So, you can see all the uh, shards of Tau Forge. Yes, they did took quite a while to get. Uh, the idea was these two would be armor and the other two will be health but then i simply just went for the little pretty numbers and uh, i wanted as much health as possible so instead of using logic and well you know being reasonable i was going for you know big numbers i mean who doesn't like to see super high health it's not like he lacks num uh, armor and this is pretty much the shard that's keeping the build alive uh, for mainly because efficiency is 45 it's horrible so this one is pretty much uh, there to make the energy well consumption reasonable and this is why so we have what i don't know why i have vigorous swaps a lot of these things uh i was i will be testing random things out but um, augment, augment, augment. Uh, shocking trooper, I believe that's it. Yeah. So let's begin with the explanation, the breakdown. This super simple build, you can see it's a umbral uh, build. We have the umbral mods installed, so that makes it very hard to make any unique builds. That's the main reason why I don't really experiment with Volt way too much. It's I honestly wish they would add like a like a module that would allow you to install multiple formas on the same slot. It would make life so much easier. It's a very basic Arcane Grace and Guardian build. It's for, uh, well, taking on harder missions. I might drop into a mission just to show you, you know, Volt's resilience, although I don't really see the point of showing you a Warframe if it's purely based off of how, uh, you know, durable it is. Yeah, sure, the abilities are nice, but they're not really, you know, eye candy, per se. Adaptation is there. No, you don't need this maxed. Most people know this. You can take any level of adaptation. 
uh, and it will do the same job. Very little difference in whether or not it's maxed, don't have to worry about it. The whole point is it takes any damage type and reduces it by 90% because it adapts to it. Lot logical. Prime continuity for ability duration. Uh, this augment is very important. So, essentially, <clears throat> logically speaking, uh, we want this to do as much damage as possible. And since we don't, don't care about efficiency, why not throw in extra ability strength? The reason is shocking trooper this uh, mod uh, when you hold down your first ability it boosts your electric damage depending on your power strength so 276 percent what that means if i have corrosive it'll boost the electricity part of it by that much so yes it does combine and it is very strong meaning that instead of having you know more ability strength i would have this and combining these two abilities is way 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 more powerful so you can see it's a very selfish build it's efficiency and range i can't really share my speed with anybody i also cannot share this with anybody unfortunately although it's fine for me because i play all of my missions in complete solo uh, very rarely do i play in public because i only do it when i need to level things so we have ability strength we also have ability duration uh, as I said, range doesn't matter in this build. We have the Umbra mods for, well, a very simple reason. Um, health, armor, strength, combining them boosts. They boost each other, obviously. Prime sure for that because I, I remember playing the game without this mod and I don't know it's not worth playing the game unless you have it it used to okay so fun fact for most of you uh for most of the players that came in uh not too long ago this mod was a reward after logging into the game for after 950 days or so so it took you basically over two years of logging in for you to have a mod that completely ignore staggers and uh, knockdowns where now after like 50 days or 100 you will be given the options like i don't know what it was like primed fury is one of them that's not tradable and you will be given an option and this is going to be one of them yes it went from 950 days to well 50. Am I mad at it? Not really. I'm glad that newer, peop newer players can just get their hands on this mod. It's very essential. I mean, wish I got it sooner myself. Can't imagine playing any Warframe without it, honestly. Uh, yeah, this is just there. It gives me more capacity. Doesn't really matter. Arcane Grace heals you, and Arcane Guardian gives you more armor. The abilities are very simple, you know, speed boost, shield, uh, eclipse for damage boost and even damage reduction and also a massive damage boost with this. I will be showing off how potent the whole thing is. <clears throat> if you're looking for a very meh type of nuke build, I would recommend you go for something like this. This ability strips all enemies' armor, even through walls, and uh, if you don't have enough ability strength, you can throw on a mod. So, armor. Let's see, yeah. So, usually what the problem you're gonna run into is you'll have 97% armor reduction, or almost 100, and you're gonna have to throw in this ability. I mean, aura, which is fine. It's not like it's anything crazy, but you don't need it. So, you strip everyone's armor, you nuke them, game over. So that's pretty simple. A race? Oh well, yeah, here's an Eidolon build. I don't remember the last time I used it, honestly. Uh, as for the experimental vault, yeah, sure, I'll show you this one as well. It's... he's the guy I basically bought after so long to try and actually change how I play with vault. And... Oh wow, okay, uh, so let's go in there and sh I'll show you the builds. Maybe, maybe, I'm not sure, but maybe eventually I'm gonna try and do something super unique. I'd like to, well, since I see myself as one of the most diehard uh, Volt enjoyers I know, 
I was thinking I would make uh, the most unique build that's very useful in the game. So that uh, I can show it off actually and be make it interesting. Uh, this is a attempt for a shinobi vault essentially. You would go and you would have a invisible vault. The whole idea behind this build was I would be... The whole idea... Uh, is okay. So let me just lower the the fucking if it's possible. There we go. Just want to lower the audio. Okay. The idea was go invisible, ignore all health mods, and nuke everybody. The problem is I don't have anything to armor strip. So yeah, that sucks. Uh, this is I guess like, more complete. You don't need this. Just get the regular one. Um, I guess the idea is basically to have some type of armor stripping to nuke the Grenier since, well, usually I'm going up against corrupted enemies. And yes, this build does work in Steel Path Circuit, I guess, pretty well. It's just the amount of moving and jumping and running from the enemy that you have to do that sort of kills it. It's just fast-paced with not that much of a, well, not that much of a reward, rewarding feeling. Uh, I, I guess I can show you what it, it looks like to use that build. So, even through walls, you would. Oops. Sorry. Milk. There we go. So even without, even without a line of sight, they all lose armor for a, a duration of, you know, let's, let's show you the duration bottom right. The problem is they start running in all directions and you need them to be clustered, so uh, pressing your fourth ability. Just make sure they're, you know, make sure that uh, the armor is gone. And you have easy nukes. That's basically the build you take to, you know, the, what's it called? Fucking, uh, Sanctuary Onslight. Yeah, that's the place where you want to go. Uh, here's the fashion frame, the colors and everything. The attachments, colors, cyandana, also colors. It's a Steam cyandana, so you might not see it if you're playing off of other platforms. As for this vault, this is my choice of colors, attachments, uh, animation, and cyan as well. It's also a Steam type of thing, so you might, you're not gonna see it unless you're playing through Steam and are paying for it with cash. Uh, now, yeah, let's uh, let's take. I don't know which weapon to show you this with, but let me see. Something that can show off the... Well, I guess Ignis Wraith because it's gradual. So... Th this is Ignis Wraith without uh, any boosts. It's doing damage, it's not bad. So, first ability. And we get a boost in Corrosive. Or Viral. I guess. Uh... Now we boost the fourth ability. This is not a great weapon to show you this with. Okay, so fuck it. I'll show you my favorite weapon right now. Well, it's a primary. Let's get a headshot in. There we go. High damage is great, but combining the two damage boosts, this is what happens. It's it, like this, the amount of time that it took me to kill those enemies there was how much it took me to kill everything. So yeah, it's pretty nice. I love seeing those high damage numbers. was thinking of maybe trying new ways, like I said, I'm not sure. <clears throat> 
But, however, moving on to my other weapons of choice, I've, yeah, I've used Scanna forever, since the beginning of the game. And getting my hands on a Prisma variant of it was a treat. So, it seems that the Incarnon variants of these weapons, basically what it, what it's happening is, uh, instead of having the ribbon disposition of, well, a Scanna, or any other weapon you're using, it appears that Incarnon uh, upgraded weapons have their own ribbon disposition, and usually it's very high, sometimes it's 4, sometimes it's 5, depending how many people are using it. And you can get some very, very nice uh, ribbon statistics on it. So this is my build right here, you can check that out. This, uh, when it's maxed or whatever, usually knocks down enemies and breaks caches all over the place. It's kind of nice. Uh, this it was my favorite weapon and the Karnon form was awesome. Very minimum effort, you don't need any boosts. Uh, I've avoided, I don't really use it anymore, I'll show you why. You don't need any boosts, it is really that good. Problem with it is super low fire rate and uh, well yeah, super low fire rate, so try and get some fire rate on, on this thing. With the weapon that I do like to use though, it's a bit more hard to use, it's a bit tedious, but it is very very good. So a couple of shots at the head and uh, shooting enemies in the head gives you a fire rate boost and it's a lot easier so. Pretty much completely just body shots and that's great. I love using this weapon in uh, missions like Steel Path because there's a lot of enemies to kill. Uh, you saw the boar. Yeah, I don't really use it too much. And that is pretty much it. For the companion to finish this off, I've chosen Prisma Shade. Uh, I'm not sure if this was intentional, but Prisma Shade makes you invisible in the most perfect uh, of times when you're low on health. When you're uh, when the enemy needily notices you when you're in danger, uh, I, probably it's completely unintentional. But god damn, this this little thing there—it's just—it's insanely good. I used to love using it, but then it was dying too often. And when the Panzer Bopophila came out, which is this one. It was my favorite, it turns into a sentinel and you never really have to worry about losing it permanently. But with the new changes to companions, the mods that we used to reach and the sentinel now just reduces the recovery time and on top of everything, even if your uh, you know, companion is incapacitated, you still you have the, you know, still have those little what the fuck is it? Is it vacuum? What is it? Oh yeah, you still get the benefits of this. They don't have to. They don't have the ability to use their, you know, abilities such as uh, what's it called? This cavat. But they still have fetch, so you never really use lose that little uh, fetch thingy or whatever the fuck. I don't know. It's kind of. I don't really know what else to show you. So this was my. Uh, yeah, this this is my build. <laughs> it's, not really, it's not much to talk about. Maybe I'll upload a very unique video in the future where I discover something new about this Warframe, but he's very simple, honestly. Second ability to boost your speed by a huge amount. Third ability for like pretty much doubling your crit chance completely and making everything invincible. A pro tip, if you're defending anything, you don't really have to be too super specific with your shields. You can do this and this. This makes this thing completely invincible to those blasts when a bombard show shoots that you know thing with heat effects. That's actually completely uh, shields it from it, melee attacks from enemies. That's how you can make Kuva canisters invincible, even though nobody does those missions anymore. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward work for not really much to talk about. So that's pretty much the, it for the video. This was my... My finally completed vault. Now, all I have to do 
is pray that one day they will drop a umbral vault which i will lose my mind over um yeah for now that's it up until i find something original to do with this frame yeah thank you thanks a lot for watching like if you can uh also thank you you know thanks for seeing this far uh comment below if you got any interesting builds would love to actually see something uh useful so that i can uh implement it here so if you got any interesting vault builds anything to share with me i'll be very thankful for the info have a nice day